Um, you want me to pray out the spirit that's hanging on, and you, you know you're given you're given the avenue, you're given the right, and uh, you must repent of this area. Uh, the idea of pulling your arm out of the monkey's cage, and if you pull your arm out of the monkey's cage, the monkey can't grab you. Uh, if, if you if you uh, if you don't give the devil a topon, a legal right, uh, an actual way of grabbing a hold of you, he won't. And uh, the victories are big, but but the the scenario in the flesh, because because well, the two big ones are lust and and anger, uh, and those are the two big issues. But I will say this. No matter what we've been through, no matter how many failures anybody's ever had, we have to start with the victories in Christ. Romans 8 is clear, the, the law of the spirit of life. You'll always find this in, whether it's chapter 6 or chapter 8, in the arrows, meaning you know this past point blank in time moment. We That sin nature has been severed, rendered powerless, and a new nature is in. I don't believe the theology of white dog, black dog inside of us, like there's two equal natures. I don't believe that at all. I believe the sin nature has been rendered powerless, and a new nature is the operating presence. However, that doesn't mean that we can't get tempted. James 1, each man is tempted when by his own evil desire, and so forth. We're enticed, we're dragged away. And see how the tie, you know, the enticement is one thing, but then as we were, if we don't do anything about it in the beginning, and it's there and there, and pretty soon we can be dragged. The idea that the, the Spirit of God is really clear on how, it, it's, how it's experienced. We, we're giving in, we're giving in, all of a sudden, we're just, we, we, you know, you just feel like you're dragged away. So that's, that's the big, I mean, that's the flesh. Even if the enemy is tempting, even if some girl comes running into your house naked and just does provocative things, you and I as believers in Christ have, you know, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, all the way down to self-control. We have the ability to stand and not give in. We have the ability, to, and, and the more we exercise and walk in the Spirit that way, that, that kind of Spirit, when I see the word self-control, I see the idea of utter freedom. Uh, we are free from the dark side, world, flesh, and the devil, though it is a battle. Yeah, and, you know, I would say, um, like you were talking about like praying over uh, people, I think it's really an incom an an, uh, an combination thing because that's what I experienced last summer when I went through the Neil T. Anderson thing with my my chiropractor. It was the it was you know clearing the air. It was that weight that cloud was like gone, and it was like suddenly I had a choice again. You know I had I felt like I had the ability. Actually, I think there's even one thing in that packet um, that uh, w one of the the prayers he has typed out that you can pray, and you know not the specific words, but the rather the, the spirit, the essence of what he's saying is, right. you know, um, in the name of Jesus Christ, depart from me, so that I may choose this day to serve the Lord. Sure. You know, um, and I think that's that's really true. You know, we we need to clear the air, but then we need to take the steps of repentance. You know, I can confess and clear the air all day if I want, but if I haven't changed my mind about what I've done, then I've gone nowhere. Exactly, exactly, Dan. I, I, and that, that's that's part of. And, that, and thank God for the for metanoia, repentance. Thank God, that's a good thing. I know we hear it as a as a bad thing, but we're encountered by the Spirit of God. Metanoia means quit sitting on the burning. You have the ability to get up off the burning hot stove and no longer be burnt. So when God is saying repent, the summons of repentance that involves the idea of renouncing. I mean, that it involves body, soul, and spirit. That involves mind, will, and emotion. So repentance is a real recognition. I mean, I know we can look at 1 John 1, 9, homo logos, you know, if we confess, we agree with God what it is. You know, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. The two actions occur. Uh, but I but I do agree there too. Uh, and I think uh, with you in the sense of repentance. Because um, when any believer has the combo of flesh and, and the demonic presence aggravating it, uh, you even the believer, and, and there's and some people don't like the term, but like auto deliverance. Uh, I believe that even a believer finally realized that the spirit of God is still there in them. They finally realized, man, I've really given into this, and and I don't want this anymore. Lord, help me, deliver me. I I renounce anything of Satan, and I get up now and I repent, and I and right now I'm going to repent of this sin, this doorway, this action, and and there's believers that get freedom. 
uh, f uh, both from any attachment and the aggravating, you know, uh, addiction, uh, slavery to that sin area, and 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 rightly so, because again, here's the principle for me: Romans eight, the dynamic indwelling Holy Spirit that is communicating the utter conquering victory of Jesus inside of us. Uh, the very act of believers putting to death sin issues is a is an actual example that we're believers that we're that's an evidence that we are really born again that that we're having that battle and that we but then then with the victory no matter what it takes them I and we need sometimes we need outside help but i think the more we know it the more we understand that victory uh the less often it you know and, and even when the temptation begins you know there's things 25 years ago that affected me that don't it doesn't you know it doesn't touch you now not that we should ever think that we can stand against anything but I, I do believe that believers are to get stronger and stronger and stronger and 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 you know we we really do experience a conquering overcoming victory against the world against the flesh and against the devil uh whatever those issues ever were I mean, there's probably no, no no doubt in my mind you've never robbed a bank or shot anybody and killed anybody in the midst of a robbery of a bank, right? <laughs> okay. So there's some things we've never done. Uh, never been tempted. I've never been tempted to go rob a bank and shoot somebody. Uh, and, of course, that's, you know, it's stealing and thievery and whatever else. But it doesn't mean we haven't done other things or haven't been, you know, uh, you know again, uh, bogged down. I, and I know this, too. I, I really believe this in my heart that when a believer does, you know, uh, whatever their, you know, evil, you know, thought or whatever, and they they are enticed, they give into it, and they do, you know, they they do fall into a sin issue. If they don't deal with it before the Lord right away, then that's where I think the flesh gets stronger and and repeating actions, and then when things are practiced, and then the enemy stretches out his hand and grabs a hold of it and holds us there, and the aggravation and the misery of it. Um, yet, um, under that cloud of flesh, you know, demonic, uh, attachment is still within the believer, the victory and, and, and we're, 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 you know, so I, I want to emphasize that freedom, and that's why I think we read in Galatians, don't use any of that freedom to indulge the sin nature. So, uh, there's freedom and there's permanent freedom. There's dynamic freedom. And if we do stumble, you know, first John two, if we do stumble, uh, then we know who the advocate is. I mean, we know who our you know, our defender is, and we go there again, and we get up again. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, back to what you said a, a minute ago, where the why the Christian gets stronger, the flesh gets stronger. That reminds me of the old phrase, you know, the Bible will keep you from sin, but sin will keep you from the Bible. Sure. This has been really great so far. Um, I think we've. We've really talked a lot about like the the practical kind of every believer side um, of things like steps we can take in our life. You know, like how to deal with demonization as as far as a believer goes, and we've we've even covered talked about the flesh issue. So I've really enjoyed this so far, Russ. Thank you. But I think now we uh, we're we're gonna move on to some of your your book stuff. And I have not finished your book. I, honestly, I'm only like into the fourth chapter. I started reading it right as we were opening up the campground Sam and I work at and you know it, Sam's my boss and I work for him and it just gets crazier. I guess he's trying to say I don't let him read books. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's just we're we're both like insanely busy and right now exactly. we're in our peak season and I, I, I ended up having a week and then a two extra weeks because you had gotten sick, which glad to hear you're feeling better sure. or you sound like it. Thank you. But you know, I thought, yeah, I can get it done. And there just there was no way. Like <laughs> Um, so anyway, yeah. So real quick, uh, we, Russ, we have a friend who was an ex member of Wicca mm -hmm. and she is now, um, you know, a Christian and her husband is now a pastor of a church. Um, they're moving to in the Catskills of New York. And it's really interesting. We were, we're planning on interviewing her next on her experiences, but I was hoping maybe to prime before we get into some of the other stuff. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, you know, Wicca, because I don't have a lot of knowledge on that. Could you kind of shed some light on that? Yeah. I mean, Wicca, I mean, witchcraft, Wiccan, uh, you're dealing with, uh, what modern day witchcraft Wicca, when we were just in Salem, uh, doing evangelism up 
when they're having their big uh, <laughs> time last October. We um, so we've we've engaged a lot of Wic- Wiccans, uh, warlocks. Uh, uh, so you have a, a really today if you if you go back to even to Gardenian, the Bosque, or the Italian witchcraft, the further back you go, the darker, more sinister. You know, you, you get the picture of more, you know, blood involved. So there's to me there's uh, what people would call, and, and and I would just categorize whatever the brands are whatever connections modern day wicca is is much more is presented and sanitized much more though on television when they did salem and when they did coven they really i mean they really modern day wiccans hated that because that's like that's not what we are we're not that bad we don't do blood stuff we don't do you know we'll summon demons we're not into that so the the modern day Wiccan's going to tell you that they're just earth powers, you know, sky. Uh, they're into creation, uh, mother goddess, father. You know, there's a male female side to to the divinity, uh, and that what they're doing is good. So they will say this is white, this is white magic, white power. This is uh, this is a good uh, good side of it. There are there's uh, there are those Wiccans that have told me straight out they're more like a gray witch. Uh, they de- and then there's black Wiccans. I had people that I dealt with. They call themselves black Wiccan, meaning that they did even darker stuff generally uh modern day wicca will not will say and there's a difference between wicca paganism druidism then there's traditional satanism non-traditional satanism uh underground luciferic satanism so when you understand the the brands that's it's good to understand them too in order to minister to them but modern day wicca witchcraft witches primarily females goddess stuff is involved but Normally, they're just going to, I mean, the truth is, the Wic, any Wiccans that I know have not sacrificed a human. It's not their aspiration to do so. Uh, but they do do spells, and, and they do do, they would do hexes, and there's a whole, depending on the variety. Just like among Christians, there's denominations. Among Wiccans, there are, like, denominations, per se. So it depends on the group and what you've gotten yourself into and where it leads to after that. Um, so Wicca, uh, modern day, uh, I read a book by uh, Jerry Johnston called The Rise of Evil. Uh, he he stated in the 90s, it was, and this is pretty much true in, in law enforcement too, the fastest growing subgroup among white middle class boys, guys, was Satanism. And usually all about power. In between the decade of 2000 and 2010, a book was put out, and the 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 declaration was the fastest growing subgroup among white female, you know, high school girls and college girls was Wicca. Uh, Wicca has opened up to lesbianism, has opened up to become the friends of the gay lesbian movement. Uh, it's opened up to you know pretty much generally anything. So here locally, we've had a deep engagement with Wiccans, pagans, druids. And I invited the Wiccans, Pagans, and the Druids to come to my systematic theology class, 30 students in the class. I invited the, the priest of the Pagan Temple, the owner of the bookstore, the goddess, the mystic goddess bookstore, and uh, two Wiccans and one Druid named Loki, all to show up. <laughs> <laughs> really? And, um, and, and, and so in a, in a general sense, between Pagans, Druids, and Wiccans, they're all, they can all coexist. Because they're similar, though they even agree there's differences in their practices. Um, and none of them would, I mean, I would immediately say that your source is demonic, Satan, and all the rest. Uh, they would, though, among them, they're like, no, we're not, you know, we're not Anton LaVey Satanists. We're not traditional Satanists. We don't uh, shed blood. Uh, 